Hello, and welcome to Health Matters on Channel Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alala Yusuf. Birth defects are defined by the World Health Organization as structural or functional abnormalities that are present from birth. Sickle cell disorder, also called sickle cell disease, occurs when the person inherits mutant genes from both parents. Every year, approximately 200,000 babies are born with sickle cell disorder. In Nigeria, the prevalence of the disorder is about 20 per 1,000 births, bringing the number of children born with the disease to as many as 150,000 every year. 24% of the population are carriers in Nigeria. That's when one has only one S gene. Frequencies of the carrier state determine the population of those with the disorder at birth. Now, prenatal diagnosis means diagnosis before birth. It's a way for a doctor to see if a developing baby has a problem. My guest is a molecular biologist and head of the DNA laboratory at the Sickle Cell Foundation, Idiaraba, Dr. Shola Ojewumi. Dr. Ojewumi is also a trained genetic counselor. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Why has this concept of prenatal diagnosis not caught on in Nigeria? What do you see as the challenges? Because I think that a woman would like to know what kind of baby she's having. Um, in that regard, there are quite a number of challenges. One, there are couples who don't truly know what their genotypes are. Okay. They don't know whether they are carrying AA, whether they are carrying AS or SS. So quite a number of times they go in, into marriage, they have uh, their babies, and they don't even know what the genotypes they are carrying or what the baby they have, I mean, it's also carrying. Okay, now, um, on many occasions we found out that people um, don't even know that it's possible haven't found out that both of them are AS, the husband is AS, the wife is AS, they don't even know that the, uh, there's a possibility of checking what the genotype of their baby could be in pregnancy. Okay, so that's why they don't, they don't come. What kind of people do you, or should I say, do you screen people for pre, prenatal diagnosis? Are there some people who don't qualify and others who qualify? Oh yes, there are eligibility criteria. Uh, the first thing is when they come, we have to go to take their blood sample, check that the uh, a, I mean, the husband is AS, the wife is AS, or in, uh, in that case, they could be at risk of having a child with sickle cell anemia. In other case, uh, the husband could be one could be AS and the other partner could be AC. You get AC in this yes. country. That doesn't cease to baffle me. I've never met anybody who said he's AC. Oh, I've met quite a number of them. Uh, the C is common among the southwestern part of Nigeria. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, we have quite a number of people in, Cam I mean, uh, in Cameroon, in Ghana, who also have C. Uh, the prevalence is not as much as S. Uh, so if we have a couple that is either at risk of having a child with SS or SC, that's the first thing. So they have to do, I mean, they can do this procedure. And um, if we found out, there was a time we found out that uh, one of them is not even having AS, is actually AA. Or there could be other hemoglobin variants because what we are conversant with are AA, AS, SS, SC. Uh, we don't know about other hemoglobin variants. So, but there SC, are quite a number of them. Is SC a sickle cell carrier? Uh, SC is not a sickle cell carrier. Carrier means somebody has a trait. For instance, somebody who is AS, the okay. S there makes or the person AC. a carrier or, or, or somebody who has a trait for sickle cell disorder. Somebody okay. who has AC too. The C there is a trait. A okay. trait for what? Is a trait for sickle cell uh, disorder. Okay. Because both SS and SC, they are sickle cell disorder. So somebody oh, who is see. AC now marrying somebody who is AS, they could have a child with hemoglobin SC. And that's also a sickle cell disorder. But then... Okay, so which is worse? That's SS what I want to say now. SC? SS has, I mean, shows um, complications that is more than the SC. So the SC shows minor complications. Okay, but SC, of course, both of them, both of them are sickle cell disorder. Okay, how early do you perform these uh, prenatal diagnostic tests? Uh, at our center, we do it from 11 to 13 weeks of pregnancy. 11 to 13 weeks, that's pretty early. Yes, that's uh, So the person the gets to know trimester. in time yes. whether her baby is going to be SS, AA, 
A A whatever. whatever. Okay. Now, can you tell me what tests you you perform? What what are the tests called? Okay. Uh, the test is called coronavirus sampling, and what coronavirus means is that there is uh, the as the baby is formed, there's a placenta. Every baby has a placenta. So the growing, the developing placenta is called the coronary villi. Okay. So that's what the obstetrician will take under ultrasound guided procedure. Okay, so you take a bit of it out. Yes, just using a special needle, take a few tissue from that coronary villi, and that's what we will check under the microscope to be sure that it's free of um, maternal contamination and then we take that to the laboratory to find out what genotype of the baby is. It's actually a DNA analysis. Some people say they, they, they actually take the, um, the amniotic, amniotic fluid. fluid. What's, is that a different procedure? Yes. Uh, the one I just described is called coronavirus sampling, CVS. In the case where you are taking amniotic fluid, it's called amniosynthesis. Okay. And that one, you do it at the second trimester of the pregnancy, usually oh, between 16 to, to 20 later. weeks. Yes. So which is actually preferable? Um, everyone, I mean, both of them have their advantages and disadvantages. Okay, For so instance, does a doctor, CVS, does a doctor uh, you know, choose one over the other depending on the patient? Or you just do any? Um, at our center, we don't perform amniocentesis. amniocentesis. We only do CVS. So anybody okay. who is referred to our center, the person will only do CVS. And then when you do CVS, you get your results within three days How after the sampling. Is this? CVS. Um, it's accurate because of a lot of details we have to put into it to be sure that the couples are eligible and then at the end of the day when the sample is taken, there are different procedures which we must perform and there are different internal control and external control mechanisms to ensure that each result you use your health is accurate. Okay, but like every other medical test, every medical test has possibility of misdiagnosis. Okay, okay so this is not excluded. But for this, the risk of misdiagnosis is less than 1%. Oh, that is good. Yes. But some women will have some um, apprehensions that if you're going to take a sample of tissue from the child in her womb, then you're going to put a hole in her. Okay. And some things are going to leak. Or that she might have an infection. How possible is that? Okay. Uh, the procedure we do is through transabdominal meaning we are collecting through the abdomen. Uh, the first thing which they are asking is, how are you sure you're not going to inflict pain on me? Yes. Number two, how are you going to, be how are you going to ensure that my baby is safe? That's right. Okay. And you don't go and And then you don't the cause any problem and all that. Okay, so what we tell them is first, during the genetic counseling, which is a component of prenatal sampling, which we do, uh, we tell them that they are going to take the sample having applied what we call a local anesthesia on okay. their on their tongue. So they don't feel the so pain. they don't feel the pain so much. I mean they might feel some discomfort. Okay. And then the sample is not taken from the baby. The sample is taken from the growing developing placenta. Oh okay. So it doesn't so even come it doesn't near the child. affect the baby at all. Okay. And then the procedure is not performed in the dark. Like I said earlier, it's performed through the guidance of ultrasound. So the, sometimes the women could be apprehensive, nervous, oh, pl please put something to cover my face. I don't want to see your needle. I don't want to see this or that. But those, for those who are brave or who are confident to see what we are doing, they can actually see through the scan how the needle is being oh, I mean, is going there. Oh, they can see how yes, it's getting into the yes, abdomen. Yes. Now that makes sense. So when That's they good. see that, they know that, oh, this is not done in the dark. And so then they would they have identified the yes. head of the child, yes. the yes. area where the placenta yes. is and, and everything. where the baby is. And then those are the kinds of measurements we also take into I mean, cognizance before doing the sampling. First, we have to ensure that the fetal well-being is adequate, everything is fine, before we go in to collect the sample. And then after collecting the sample, uh, the CVS, we also show the mother, see your baby, the heart is beating, everything is fine, and all that. Okay, so we usually ensure that why the procedure is being done.